All right, YouTube, today we're going to throw a ball straight up off the top of a cliff, let it go up in the air and come back down and land at the bottom of the cliff. And in this problem, we're going to solve for the maximum height the ball reaches above the base of the cliff, as well as the total time the ball spends in the air. Now, to actually understand what's going on in this problem, first we're going to graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of the ball from when it's thrown until when it lands. Now, from the moment this ball is thrown until the moment it lands, it's in free fall. So even the ball goes up then comes back down, the acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, even though the direction of the ball changes. Now the ball is thrown up in the air at 10 meters per second. So on our velocity versus time graph, we're going to see a diagonal line with a slope of negative 9.8 and a y-intercept of 10. Now as long as the velocity is positive, the ball is going to be moving up. And once the velocity becomes negative, the ball is going to be moving down. And this point right here on our velocity graph where the ball transitions from moving up to down is where the ball reaches its maximum height. And I'll show you why that's important in our calculations in just a little bit. Now moving on to position, we know the cliff has a height of 20 meters. So initially the ball's at a height of 20 meters. Now I know some of you wanna worry about the height of the person. We're not gonna complicate this to that degree. Just say the person is terribly short. So we know the ball's gonna go up and then come back down. And on our position versus time graph, that's going to look like a parabola. And right here on our position versus time graph, you can see both the maximum height as well as the total time the ball is going to spend in the air. So getting down to calculations, first let's solve for the maximum height the ball reaches above the ground. Laying out our five kinematic variables, we need to find the displacement of the ball as it moves upward. We know the initial velocity of the ball is 10 meters per second. And at its highest point, we can see the velocity of the ball is going to be zero. And VF, which in this case occurs at the ball's maximum height, is zero. And this is free fall, so acceleration is going to be negative 9.8. So choosing the correct kinematic equation, we can plug in our values and solve for the upward displacement of the ball. Now this displacement of 5.1 meters is the maximum distance the ball reaches above the top of the cliff. So if we want to solve for the maximum height, we need to take the height of the cliff, which is 20, and add it to that upward displacement of 5.1, giving us a maximum height above the ground of 25.1 meters. Next, we'll move on to the total time. So again, setting up the five kinematic variables. Because the ball lands at a different point in time than when it reaches its maximum height, we have to set up a different set of five kinematic variables. We can't reuse the old ones from when we solve for maximum height. Now from start, all the way to finish, the ball goes from the top of the cliff to the ground. That's a displacement of negative 20 meters. Now the ball's still thrown up at 10 meters per second. We don't know the final velocity in this case, but we know the acceleration's still gonna be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're solving for the time the ball spends in the air. So using the displacement equation, we plug in the values from our problem, but we run into an issue. We have to use the quadratic equation. Now kids, if you want to use the quadratic equation, go for it, have fun. But the quadratic equation yields two results, which in this case are just the intersection of this parabola with the height of zero. And so that can make this a bit of a headache. Now the reality is, I don't want to deal with the quadratic equation at all. And here's the trick. Anytime the quadratic equation comes up in kinematics, you can always get around using it by solving for the other unknown variable first, which in this case is the final velocity. So plugging in our values for the final velocity, we find VF is 22.18. Now you have to be careful with this method a little bit too, because the final velocity is downward. And realize when we took the square root, we have to decide whether that result is positive or negative. And because the ball is going down, the result is negative. So now that we know VF, we can use a simpler kinematic equation to solve for the total time the ball spends in the air and we find it takes the ball 3.28 seconds to land. So this has been how to graph the motion of an object thrown upward off a cliff, as well as find the maximum height and total air time. I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.